Can anybody tell me what this fossil is? A fish? Nope. A bird? What? No. A human. Esteemed 18th century naturalist John Jacob Scheutzer. Of course. Heh. <laughs> this is what I imagine went down in 1726 when Scheutzer first described his fossil, Homo deluvi testis. Man, witness of the deluge. Deluge? Scheutzer believed he had found was a child that had been struck down by the deluge, the biblical flood. I think I need to tell you that this is not a child. Then what is this? Most of the biblical flood was a very real thing and something like paleontology didn't really even exist back then. Nobody really wanted to challenge him on that. Until 1765 when geologic heavyweight George Cuvier threw his hat into the ring and was just like, that's a salamander, what do you mean? Oh. Today he's known as Andreas Scheutzeri, a sizable salamander and all around good lad. Let me weave you a tale of a woman, her T-Rex and a whole bunch of red tape. This is Sue, the dinosaur with the most interesting custody case. August 1990, Susan Hendricks was part of an expedition to the Cheyenne River Indian Reservation in South Dakota. While out on a stroll due to a flat tire, Susan discovered a bone sticking out the side of a cliff. She took it back to Peter Larson, leader of the expedition and president of the Black Hill Institute for Geologic Research. And he was just like, that's a fucking T-Rex. Immediately ordered an excavation on the site. In the following weeks, paleontologists would unearth the most complete Tyrannosaurus fossil we have ever found. She's over 90% complete and drop dead gorgeous. Okay, where's the legal drama? See, Larson had paid $5,000 to the owner of the land, Maurice Williams. After excavation, Williams claimed the money was just for the right to excavate the fossil, not the fossil itself. A lengthy court battle broke out between Williams, Larson and the US government who held the land in trust. At one point, the institute was raided by the FBI. Ultimately, Larson lost and Williams regained ownership. Sue was put to auction and is now in Chicago alongside her life-size replica. In a lot of ways, paleontologists with their fossils are like parents with their kids. They birth them, care for them, prepare them, and put them on display for validation from others. But this child was so despised by his parents that its legal name just had to reflect that. Meet Irritator, the annoying and probably illegal Spinosaurus. We'll get there. Welcome to Dinos and Debugging. In the 1990s, the Museum of Stuttgart, Germany acquired a Spinosaurus skull of arguable legality. The skull had been smuggled out of Brazil by fossil punchers. It ended up being resold several times before ending up in Stuttgart. At some point in the chain, the fossil had been modified with plaster to drive up the price. You can see the extended lower number drops. The scientists had to painstakingly remove all the plaster to reveal the actual fossil. At some point, they must have been like, yeah, fuck this guy. But it did teach us some cool things about Spinosaurus. The way they were able to spread out their lower jaws as they opened their mouth. It's also a stolen fossil from Brazil, so let me know what you think. See ya. This is one of the most badass fossil finds of all time. True dinosaur mortal combat. Welcome to dinos and to Buck. Let me set the scene. 125 million years ago, a Spatapasaurus was just minding its own business when all of a sudden, it gets jumped by a rapino mammoth, a mammal the size of a badger, and it starts to really dig into it. Pinomamus clenches onto its forelimb, holding its jaws and hind limbs. Tachosaurus completely freezes up in a fear response. They don't notice the ground rumbling beneath them, ash tumbling down from a nearby mountain. And before they know it, it's over. Ants of death forever immortalized in volcanic rock. A like this would have been very common in the Carboniferous, but seeing it this well preserved is absolutely stunning. Who do you think would have won? I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> this is Adam's mammoth. Well, theoretically, this is Adam's mammoth, but this is what people believed it looked like when it was found in 1799. Welcome back to Dinos and Debunking, and this is the story of the first ever mummified woolly mammoth. In 1805, Russian botanist Mikhail Adam set out on an expedition to Siberia. He heard rumors about a massive creature found in the ice and decided to retrieve it. What he found left him speechless. In front of him, frozen in the Siberian permafrost, lay what looked to him a lot like an elephant. Only, you know, like with hair and stuff. We had previously found individual mammoth bones, but never something nearly this complete. The idea that mammoths were even a separate species from elephants was a very new one. Previously been believed that these were simply elephant bones that had been swept away by a biblical flood or other natural disasters. Adam sent back the fossil along with over 40 pounds of hair. It was reconstructed in the Kunstkammer in St. Petersburg where it can be found to this day. Have a good one, see you tomorrow. Welcome back to the last day of Dino Centibank. For this finale, I want to take you back to where it all started, into a windswept little coastal village by the name of Lyme Regis. During the early 1800s, visitors to this little village could spot a rather curious figure along the shoreline. A woman clad in Victorian walking dress hacking away at the rocks with hammer and chisel for hours on end. This was Mary Annie. Since her family had always struggled financially, Mary supplemented their income by selling curiosities she found at the beach to tourists. 
These included curled rocks lovingly known as snake stones, or these elongated rocks known as devil's fingers. In 1811, Mary would make a discovery that would change science forever. While looking for fossils with her brother, she stumbled upon a four foot long skull unlike any she had ever seen before. Mary's crocodile, later known as Ichthyosaur, along with her arguably even more famous fossil finds, became a cornerstone in a geologic, scientific, and religious revolution. Thank you for watching and happy holidays.